this is your reminder to subscribe. Thank you. Or hit the bell or follow on audio platforms. Also, audio might sound a little different this week. I recorded this episode at my friend Jordan's house in Chicago. So if it's a little echoey, I'm sorry. But it was so much fun having Jordan on, and I'm so excited to introduce you guys to one of my best friends. Enjoy the show. You can't see my feet, can you? No, you, on the floor you can't, for sure. No free feet pics. No, I have socks on, but I don't like socks. Huh? They just, like, gross me out. Hmm. This is the second time you've been on the podcast, but first time meeting everyone. <laughs> Everyone's like, who is this? <gasps> if you're not on Patreon, you haven't seen the episode I recorded with my friend Jordan. So, everyone, this is Jordan. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> we uh, we did a Patreon. Oh, God, when was that? Probably July we did that episode. Yeah, in the summer. Yeah, and like I had a flight. We were like racing to get it done. We like ripped shots. Probably got a little too drunk. Oh my God. I, it was the most hungover I was all weekend. So it was... <laughs> <laughs> what? And great we day. Out. Great day to finally um, shoot it was, yeah. Oh my but God. We got it done. We got through it. Yeah. I think this is going to be really good. <laughs> I'm continuing on a theme of, um, I kind of explained it to you where it was like, pull yourself together, man, like Edna mode. But it's okay. not just dudes. There's some stories with girls kind of losing their minds where they need okay. to pull their shit together. And that's just kind of the vibe. It's just people that are being so goofy and they just need to get it together. Okay. Just get it together, people. I'm just going to keep that little picture in my mind mm -hmm. of Edna just Mode. Smacking just them. <laughs> yeah. I know. Insert, <laughs> insert gif here on YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, I just like, I okay. don't know why I saw like a, a video of it or something. I was like, oh, that's such a good theme. I need to do it. So it's going to be good. Okay. Give the people, should we give them a little intro? I guess if they haven't seen Patreon, they're going to be like, how do you two know each other? What's the story? Okay. So give them, give them the lowdown. How did we meet? What was our first date? How did we meet? So, okay, we're from the same hometown. I knew of Morgan. I went to Morgan's birthday party in high school, but she didn't know me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she threw a huge party. Oh, that was part my graduation party. Or graduation yeah. party. I think that's like how I kind of like knew you yeah that was crazy Morgan threw great parties um and then, yeah she didn't even know I was there and then uh, in college then I went to U of M where Morgan was um she messaged me on Facebook we went on our first date Lauren pasta bar um which is gone it's gone now it is yeah what is it Just I have no nothing? idea Aww. no idea but yeah so, I don't think I went ever again no it was the first and only time it <laughs> was the first and only time but we got introduced from matt lord like one of my best high school friends and we met at like state hockey like the minnesota state hockey the first time and then we had our first date that was probably one of my first times drinking so i probably don't remember <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember i don't know if i remember meeting you there it was in Maybe the I it was in the lobby of your hotel and i was just like oh my god she's so cool like I just like remember Matt being like, we're going to go say hi to Jordan. And I was like, who's Jordan? And then I went over there with him and like you were, we were sitting on these like, this was the bougiest hotel. And so the fact like Jordan was staying there, it was like. It was in the crown? It was the St. Paul. Like your dad this had a room or something. St. Hockey? Yeah. And I was just like, oh my God. I was like, I just thought you were so cool. So then when <laughs> Matt told me you were transferring to the U, I was like, yep, set it up. Let's go. Yeah. I was so excited. And the rest is history. The rest is history. I, I should insert some of our college pictures on no, YouTube. just not the blonde ones. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Our no. first pictures, we like started going to go for hockey games together. And that no. was, it was love after that. But okay. No blonde. What? I think it was Molly Mahoney. <laughs> Molly Mahoney, Molly Mahoney. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Me and Jordan shared the same fake id like it wasn't us but it was a real minnesota it was ID. a blonde girl so yeah i remember the bouncer one time being like hey welcome back for the third time tonight molly <laughs> i'm like mm -hmm. i think <gasps> there was one night we were at blarney's which is a bar in dinky town and there was one night where every molly mahoney was in the house her me and you i think that yeah i feel like there was like three molly or four was her. very nice with her id yeah i could see it never met her but 
Really? No. Oh my God. She was great. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Molly. Molly, you made college so fun for us. <laughs> okay, let's dive in. Okay, so you have had your fair share of like bridesmaids positions. You were a bridesmaid in our friend Kate's wedding that we were both a part of. And then like the yeah. following weekend, you had your sister's wedding where you were like maid of honor, bridesmaid. You have a lot of sisters. I oh, don't yeah. remember. Back, back to back weddings. Yeah. My first two weddings ever. Back to back. Okay. So you have yeah. some familiarity with being a bridesmaid. Brides, yeah. Brides. Yeah. Bridesmaid. Bridesmaid. Brides. Bridesmaid. Yeah. That sounds weird. Why I know. That sound weird? I, I said it out loud. And I'm like, that's not right. Bridesmaid. And then maid of honor for my sister. Yeah. So, you know, you know the drill. Yeah. Okay. So this first one was posted about a month ago. It is titled, am I the asshole for kicking out one of my bridesmaids for showing up in the wrong dress? My 23 female wedding was back on Saturday, December 31st, and I'm still getting backlash from this. So I want to know if it was an asshole move. In the country I live, it's currently winter and we get a fair amount of snow. So my wedding was winter themed. The color theme was forest green and gold. My dress was obviously white, and I chose the color of my bridesmaid's dresses to be a forest green as well. My maid of honor's dress was black, and everyone was to wear gold accessories. I have this friend, we'll call her Kat, that I asked to be one of my bridesmaids. When we went dress shopping and I told them the color theme I was going for, Kat immediately expressed that she thought forest green was a bad choice. <laughs> She said that she thinks it's not a flattering color and thought I should choose something different and more girly. I said no because my wedding was winter themed and I thought the color would go perfect with the theme. She suggested a pink, blue, even a red. I said no, but thanks for your opinion. She found out my maid of honor's dress was black and asked if she could wear black too. I said no, only my maid of honor was wearing black. I paid for all of the dresses. Wow. <laughs> very, very generous. Yeah. <laughs> Fast forward to wedding day. Everyone's getting their hair and makeup done and Kat shows up 30 minutes late holding a bag that looked like it had a dress inside. I asked her what this was for. She told me it was for later on at the reception if she got uncomfortable and wanted to change after pictures. I was like, okay, cool. So fast forward, we're all dressed and walking down the stairs because the ceremony is beginning in 30 minutes and we're going to take some pictures before. Kat is the last person to come down and she's wearing a black dress. At the time, I was preoccupied taking pictures with my parents, but my maid of honor came over to me and made me aware of the situation. I confronted Kat and asked her what was going on. She said she hates her bridesmaid's dress as the color is ugly and makes her look gross. So she's wearing black. I told her, please go back and change. She refused and started walking away from me. I said, I'm going to ask her one more time. And if she doesn't oblige, I'm calling security and kicking her out. She began yelling at me to fuck off. So I called security and asked them to please escort her out. She started making a big scene, yelling how I'm such a bitch that I can't force her to wear anything and that I'm a horrible, inconsiderate friend. The wedding went on and it was truly amazing. Ever since the wedding, Kat has been blowing up my phone with texts saying some really nasty things and asking for the money back she spent on the black dress since it was a waste and she didn't get to wear it. I had to block her number. Some of my other bridesmaids have been giving me shit, saying that I was a little harsh kicking her out and embarrassing her like that, and that maybe I should give her the money back. Am I the asshole for kicking her out? No. She paid for the first dresses and then wants to get paid back for an additional dress. Yeah, for her black dress that she, that she didn't need to buy. No, she decided to go out and do this. <sighs> no, I... Oh my God. Like it's the bride's day. It's her day. Like who cares what your dress is? You can choose your own dress for your wedding. You can like. Oh my God. The sky right now. Okay. I noticed it behind her head, but it's like barely there. <gasps> We're so distracted up here. Jordan's view is overlooking. I've never seen it. this. I've never seen it this pink. It's insane. I hope it shows on YouTube. I'll take a picture. Pretty. In yeah. case it doesn't. 
Was it pink at night, sailors delight something? What's the saying? I'm not sure. Isn't it so? I'm not or sure. pink in the morning, sailors take warning, something. Oh, like. God, probably. That well, sounds I, right. That sounds right. I don't know what that means, but. Highly distracted by this, I mean. by this view. It's gorgeous. Jordan lives in this like crazy little park in Chicago. It's amazing. I'm spoiled. I'm spoiled with this view. Oh, but okay. Sorry. Okay. I was um, like, oh my God. No, I think she's trying to make it about her and it's her friend's day. Like it's one day. And the fact that she bought another dress and then wants her to pay for it is like, like comical. Like, what? yeah. And her friend bought that paid for the dresses too, which like, I mean, honestly, and I've never like, that's a really generous thing for the bride to do. Yeah. Like that is so nice. I have to say too, like even just picking out the dress, on, honestly, that just as a bridesmaid, like it makes it life so much easier. Mm-hmm. Just here's, here's what you're wearing. Put it on. Fine. Yeah. For my sister it was like, pick out whatever you want. I'm like, it took me a year and a half to find a dress. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Our friend Kate's wedding was nice. Cause she just said like, this is the fabric and color, but you can get any style. I actually loved that. Yeah. That just was like really this chill color, too. this fabric. There were still like hundreds to choose from. Hundreds. Though, so like, <laughs> hundreds. Honestly, if it was like, yeah. I spent days, days and days and days looking yeah. for dresses. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of work. And so I agree. I think this is just crazy. It's one day, one evening. Yeah. How many pictures do you post in that bridesmaid's dress? Anyways, none. No. If you don't like the dress and how it looks on you, you don't have to post any pictures. Yeah. The bride might post a couple from her day, but like you don't have to post. You don't have to like let everyone see it in you. And honestly, I think the bride was so nice to even say, yeah, later on in the, after the ceremony, if you're uncomfortable, you can put another dress on. Right. Like that is even nice. Yeah. Like get your pictures, get your ceremony, everything. And then after like, yeah, who cares afterwards? Like, but I kind of like wearing the bridesmaid's dress. It just makes you you, what you liked it. Yeah. Cause like, it just like, you feel a part of this club where you're just like, everyone, everyone at the wedding knows like I'm a bridesmaid. (laughs) You just feel a part of this like special club. Yeah. And it just like, you feel like you're in a position of power almost like, yeah, I'm a bridesmaid. I can go behind the scenes. I get to go to the special room. I got the good snacks. You get to wear like a full length dress. Yeah. Usually, well, a, a, lot of, a lot of time. I'm like, yeah, I'm dying to wear. I'm like dying to wear my like old, like, you know, like prom dresses and stuff. Once you get older, when can you wear like a dress like that? You can't. I've seen or a lot of there's people. Fancy, I need to get invited to the fancy parties. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. I know. We both do. Military balls, they wear long dresses, I guess. I think we're too old for that, though. Oh, Are yeah. we? Are we getting too old? <laughs> Probably. I, feel like I have a lot no of... idea. That's the only time I ever see, like, long dresses other than... Maybe not. But... What do you think of the other friends siding with Kat? I think they're just trying... I She seems like a difficult friend, and I think they're not trying to get on her bad side either. <laughs> I think it's the bride's day. Yeah. Um, I mean, my hair at one of the weddings was interesting <laughs> it was fine it was it just wasn't but, what you would have and yeah. I, actually at both of them I didn't love it but it wasn't my day like it's the bride's day so like, no it doesn't care. matter it's like yeah it's the bride and groom like it, yeah I literally I remember my brother's wedding I was kind of a pain in the ass because like with really big boobs, it's like just something you're conscious of with bridesmaids dresses and like the sweetheart top, like yeah. always falls down and I wanted yeah. to be able to dance. And so my brother's wife like picked that for her dress. And I was just like, I think it was, it was back in 2015. So I was like still in college, like re- like insecure, yeah. whatever. And so I remember being like, is there any way I can do a dress with like straps? And like, I kind of had to like, just be like, I just want to be comfortable. Like, blah. and I even felt bad asking for that. Like, she didn't, I don't think she even cared. She had like two different styles picked up Yeah. for like her bridesmaids dresses, but like it just had to be purple. Yeah. And so it was like really easy to just like switch. But I remember just being like, I don't even want to ask. Like, I don't want to make a big deal. Like, I don't want to like create more drama for her. Mm-hmm. So. But that's different. I think if this was literally just a color issue. Yeah. Then like, who cares about the color? I get the fit though. Cause like everyone's body's different and yeah. usually your bridal party there's a range of sizes and shapes and like yeah if you choose one style like some people might look great on some people like will feel so uncomfortable mm-hmm. yeah 
Which I like. Yeah, I like the like what Kate did, which just like give people their choice. Yeah. Pick a color and then so I don't know how this was, but like to like not want to wear the color. Like it's dark green or black. It's not even that different. No, it's literally basically <gasps> like just turn dark green down and it turns to black. Like what? Yeah. And then also if the maid of honor is wearing black and then you're kind of stealing her. Yeah. Like spotlight. Which, because I feel like the maid of honor should ha- like have something a little different, like just. Mm-hmm. So then, yeah, by taking by doing black the same that she's doing. Yeah, she was kind of stealing. Her I mean, thunder. it's better than like coming down with white or something. But oh my god! <laughs> but the fact that I think the Kicked first out time right away. <laughs> well, and it didn't have to go like that for her either. Like she tried it. Hey. Yeah. Not only did you try to change the color at the first appointment when everyone was trying on dresses. Yeah. And your friend was like, no. St- like, thanks for the opinion, though. Yeah. But then she tried to sneak down the stairs and, like, still have the black dress on. It's like, okay, at that point, when your friend asked you, hey, not okay, yeah. please go back upstairs and change, and you don't, then that's where, like, you're the biggest. You're already an asshole in my book, but, yeah. like, you just made this situation a million times worse. You made it yeah. so dramatic. And then screaming at her on her wedding day, calling her an inconsiderate bitch or whatever Wait, it was that part. um <sighs> she, she started making a big scene yelling how i'm such a bitch that i can't force her to wear anything and that i'm a horrible inconsiderate friend <laughs> you don't have to be a bridesmaid you can yeah. say no yeah if you it's an honor to be a bridesmaid like yeah you can say no. no it's okay to say no especially if you can't afford it like it's always okay to say no yeah but like to agree to something and then try to sabotage it yeah just because you don't like the color and you want to no <laughs> look at 27 dresses like the things that she had to wear <laughs> oh my god i love that movie james marsden so like hot. just the the worst the worst outfits she had like a cowgirl theme that she had to do oh, yeah just like and there's there's themes like that people love theme oh weddings oh. some people love theme weddings oh some one of my family members or like ex-husband something got remarried and had they live in montana and had a sasquatch themed wedding stop sasquatch <laughs> what did they wear i think they just wore like cowboy boots and cowboy hat but they had a dress up Someone dressed in the Sasquatch suit. Stop. That in the wedding, their cake had a big Sasquatch. <laughs> Why like, do they like it so much? <laughs> of all themes that you could pick for your wedding, Sasquatch. Like I, Bigfoot. Uh, like oh I kind of want to go. I mean, I've never been to Montana. Like <laughs> No, but now I want to go to a Sasquatch wedding. Of all themes. Oh my God. That's actually so crazy. I saw, we had one Reddit story a while ago where someone wanted to have a Titanic themed wedding. I don't know. Like what, the good part of Titanic or like, I don't know if there wait, is a good you, part. <laughs> I think at the beginning of the movie, it's like fancy. It's yeah. like more like great Gatsby. But you could just call that something, but like, just do that time frame. Why Titanic? Yeah. Titanic was. Okay. Side 1912. Note. Oh yeah. So almost the roaring twenties, but like, Oh, I thought it was later than that. Glitz and glamor. I did I, too. I don't know what I thought. Side note, I saw something on. TV, I think, the other day about the Titanic. You know, like the they could both fit on the raft. Mm. I thought they could. I've said Sci- that on the podcast, and, but before. like scientists or I don't know the Mythbusters. S- some people like actually tested it, and if they both would have gone on there, they could have fit, but they would have sank it. So, so they like both would have died. I would have like been like, okay, you get your chest up, and I'll get my chest up, and then we'll kick in the water. Yeah, but then they would have got like hypothermia or something and died. There's a guy, I forgot. I just like listened to this story about this dude and he was a worker on the Titanic, ended up saving a bunch of other people. Yeah, and he was the very last person off the ship as it sank into the water, very last person off. And a lifeboat saw him, but they didn't have enough room. So they left and he treaded water for like an insane amount of time and still survived. Oh my God. I don't think I could do that for six minutes. And like freezing cold water, like in the middle of the ocean. Oh my God. I think the ocean is like the scariest thing. I hate the ocean. I love it. I love water, but it's terrifying. Yeah. Like what's down there? Yeah. When you can't see underneath. 
Oh no. my gosh. I think it's this guy named Jofflin. Charles still Jofflin. Alive? No, he died in 1956. But he was a chef and then like got a bunch of people off, like saved all these people. And then like, you know, in the movie, how someone rides down the back of it, like they hold on to the metal railing as it goes down. Yeah. That's what he did. He just, I guess, like stepped off of it into the water is how he described it. That's insane. I know. So nuts. Okay. Moving along. Yeah. This one is like probably one of the most requested stories I've had in a while. And I saw it come on Reddit and I was like, this can't be real. But you guys have probably heard about it. If you're oh um, Super Bowl watchers, uh-huh. did you hear about the 2B commercial? <laughs> oh, I watched the Super Bowl. Did yeah. it get you too? Yeah. It got our whole group. We were all looking for the remote. We're like, wait, what happened? I thought it was amazing. It was a it was great a commercial. Hilarious. Like genius. Like, But it has a really dark side. <laughs> a really dark side. People fight. A lot of domestic abuse. A lot of servers. Oh. A lot of servers got drinks thrown on them. A lot of people like had their partners flip out. And this is something that I didn't really- I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah. Especially like in public too. Like if you're watching it out somewhere, like mm-hmm. in a bar or something. Yeah. A lot of servers or bartenders oh got God. like bitched at, screamed at, drinks thrown on them. And I just like, I'm like, why are people so insane about sports? Like soccer, football. Yeah. There's like so much violence around soccer and football games, like domestic violence and stuff like that. It's insane. Okay. Now that makes me like not like the commercial. Like I didn't even realize, but in the moment I was like, that was genius. Yeah. It was so good. It caught everyone's attention. Like, wait, what What happened here? Like who who sat on the remote? Who like, Mm -hmm. and then, oh. I don't even know what Tube, like, I know it's some sort of streaming thing, but yeah. like now everyone knows the name Tubi from it, but I didn't think about the. It's one yeah. of the best ads I've seen. It's just like, it's so I didn't, sad that people are so fucked up that it's, it's turned into that. Yeah. Cause I'm sure like when they were making that, they never, I don't like, I know that would never cross my mind. I don't know. Like it, it honestly didn't until I started seeing this post and other stories. Until it actually happens. Yeah. And then, yeah. And there was something else like, and I saw a lot of lighthearted responses too, where people were like, well, I learned I was the least favorite friend in the group because they blamed me for the Tubi commercial. Like small stuff like that. It's kind of funny, but like, it's not funny. Yeah. It's just like, (laughs) oh, sad. (laughs) Yeah. Like who got blamed for the Tubi commercial? Exactly. (laughs) Oh my God. It's just so bad. So this story is from Off My Chest. And it's titled, I broke up with my boyfriend over the 2B Super Bowl commercial. (laughs) What? Yeah. There is a content note on this commercial. Oh my God. On the Reddit story. Uh And this is like the first time I've actually seen it. But it says intimate partner violence. So that can kind of be a trigger warning for anyone that might be triggered by this story um, and the conversation around it. So this is your time to skip ahead. I, 23 female, broke up with my boyfriend, 25 male, over the reaction he had to me over the 2B commercial. For those of you who are unaware, during the Super Bowl commercials, 2B, a streaming app, played a prank where they made it look like someone was changing the TV over to their app. I'm sure that in many households, it caused chaos and was a funny event, but not in mine. My boyfriend thought I was the one changing the channel and began screaming at me violently, calling me things that I don't even want to write down. Even as I told him it was a commercial, he ignored me and kept blowing up at me and punched a hole in our living room wall. He is <laughs> absolute psychopath. Oh my God. He eventually realized what actually happened and awkwardly apologized, but I was so disgusted over his reaction to a 15 second commercial. I feel like if you can't keep your anger in check and get that violent over something so small, I don't want to be around for it. We've been together for over a year, living together for the past two months, and I've known him to get angry at things sometimes, but this really took me off guard, and I can't forget how unsafe I felt around him during this. In the morning, I took some of my things, and I'm now staying at my parents' house. 
I left him a note telling him how I felt and that I didn't think we were going to work out long term. He's been messaging and calling me repeatedly. My parents told me that I'm overreacting since he had a bit to drink and the Super Bowl gets everyone riled up. No. But I don't feel I am. I don't think it's normal to be that angry. The fact that like, regardless of what it's, what he's angry at, the fact that he like is punching a hole in the wall, like, and it's literally over like changing the channel. I think she's, maybe the commercial was like good to just get out, like to realize that sooner than later, like dodging a bullet. Yeah. It's like that behavior is regardless of what it's over. It's like you see their like true colors and Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, no, get out of there. Like It's just scary. And I think a lot of times it is kind of like this pattern of like, first they punch walls and then they punch you. Like it's going to escalate. Yeah. And this was in a 15 second time span. Like it set him off that quick. Like that's. That's scary too. Like I would be terrified. Like yeah, he her. was drinking, but like, so every time he's drinking, you have to be scared that you'll like set him off. Like, I don't think that's an excuse. No, that fuck her he parents was, for saying that. Yeah, like I, you're overreacting. No, I think you're. Yeah. I think you're responding appropriately. Yeah, honestly, like if you don't feel safe, like serious, like I feel like if anything, they you like they should protect you. Like you're supposed to feel safe with them like that's the point of having a partner yeah you should feel safe with them right I hope she actually follows through with this and doesn't get like gaslit by people to like oh it was just it's not a big deal blah 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 blah. because yeah okay this was a commercial Mm -hmm. but imagine if she had accidentally done this yeah he got awkward and embarrassed after he learned it was a commercial but if this would have actually been her And like all of these people in these situations that had similar experiences, if it was actually their fault, no way he would have been embarrassed and apologetic after. Like he would have thought that was okay. He would have been justified for like changing the channel. Like, I feel like then you just, you're what, you're walking on eggshells at all times. Like you don't want to set them off. Like that's what it would feel like. And then, yeah, what's the point of being in a relationship if you, I don't know. You should be yourself and be comfortable and like supported, loved, and not feel nervous or scared or. Yeah. It's not fair for her or anyone that went through this. The top comment on this one is when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. Yeah. Um, which is a quote by Maya Angelou. And they go under it and go believe him. He's got an impressive collection of red flags. And so that was the top comment at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, This is using the Wayback Machine because it's been deleted by the person who originally posted it. So our OP. And the comment on it now is Jesus fucking Christ. That ad is not even 10 seconds long. It only took him that much to insult you and punch a wall, ultimately destroying your mutual trust. Yikes. That's scary. You deserve much better than that. Mad respect for standing your own ground. Absolutely. I can't even- To be able to trust someone again after they did that, like, I don't even know how long that would take. Like, it's- Actually, I don't know if I could trust someone. Like, I I think I I would be in the same boat. I know it's easy to like think about like all of the good times together and like you you think about those good times and you're going to miss that. But like, n- yeah, no. You start to like romanticize it. Yeah. The rose colored glasses You have on. to think about all the bad time, all the times you feel bad. Like if it happened and yeah, in that short of like a span of time that it's going to happen again and yeah, it could be worse and no. Well, and they've only been together like a year, a year and maybe two months. Like Mm -hmm. I'm kind of confused by the timeline, but get out now versus you're five years down the road and you have a kid with this person. Oh yeah. Like once you're married or once you have kids, like at least if you don't have anything like binding, like it's, yeah, it's better that you found out sooner than later. Absolutely. Get out. This dude needs to get his shit together. This is unacceptable. If anyone- (laughs) Little Adam. (laughs) 
Yeah, pull yourself together, man. Yeah, I wish I could do her accent. I know, yeah, no, my attempt is pretty Wait, I need brutal. To hear it. My attempt is brutal. Okay, I'll do it later. But <laughs> I need to, I need to actually hear her say we'll, it. We'll play it in the car on the way okay. to the game. Okay. But if anyone in your life like is this obsessed with sports, this is a red flag. Like if they're going to react like yeah. this when their team loses and they punch a TV and burn their city to the ground or do stupid shit. Like Philly, Philly had to grease all of their light poles. I saw that. This is ridiculous. I saw that. People who are this obsessed and aggressive about their team losing or even winning and they still act like this. Yeah. Need professional help. Yeah. They need a padded room during football season. Honestly, yeah. they shouldn't They shouldn't be allowed to watch football. And I think if you have someone in your life where like everything's great, perfect, but they get super upset and they're a bad sport after games, don't watch <laughs> games with them. Be gone on Sunday. But it's so hard because it's like, Football has become like, oh, it was a Sunday thing. And now it's Monday night football, Thursday night football. It's every, Sunday it's football. literally every day of the week. It's, yeah. It's so dumb. I have to say, I have to say like when football season started, I was kind, I was like glad I was single because I didn't have to deal with someone. Like literally it's with fantasy football and with all the games, mm -hmm. it's like. Nonstop. I mean, my brother-in-law, I love him, but it's like oh, I forget they can't do anything because there's a football game on tonight. Like it's, That's literally my brother, Taylor. And I, yeah. And he's not even that bad. Like he's, but it's. They get so sucked in. Yeah. And it's. So yeah. sucked in. So I'm glad I didn't have to watch any of those. No. <laughs> or deal with it. Oh my God. I actually no. saw, I think I, probably TikTok because I learned everything on TikTok. But I saw a thing <laughs> and it was like, something about the sweat ratio and it was like, um, okay, I'm horrible at telling stories or like reciting something, but it was something like the more you sweat yourself, you know, like working out or playing sports or something compared to watching other people sweat, like watching sports and stuff like that. It was like the more you sweat instead of watching it, I'm horrible at saying this, but it was something like you're happier and it's just like- Oh, okay. Something like your so life maybe, will just be better and like it's you'll you'll be happier. Like you don't you need to sweat more than you watch other people sweat. Like Oh, that's interesting. Kind of like, you know, people that just sit and watch people play sports all yeah. day and like but have never like gone out and done it themselves. Or just don't, you know, work out or do work anything. Work out or do anything. It's like mm -hmm. and then yeah. Well, also when you work out, you have happy endorphins and you're yeah. get, like getting stress out tension whatever so right yeah honestly I see that being very valid and I do just want to like say like if you are one of these people struggling with an abusive relationship it on average I've said this again and again on average takes someone seven attempts to leave yeah and I commend you it is such a tough position to be in yeah it and I get there's so there's so much context that go into our lives and our relationships and it's not mm -hmm. easy. But just know like if you are struggling, like you deserve better. You deserve to be safe and happy and loved and supported mm -hmm. and cherished. You're not someone's punching bag. Like no matter what you think of yourself, like I'm telling you, you do not deserve that. Yeah. So if anyone out there does need any help, the National Domestic Violence Hotline number is 800-799-7233. And I'll post it in the description as well. But I think there's like text options now if you can't talk on the phone and you need help. You know, there's there's options out there. But just know you deserve better. Like we all deserve yeah. such happy, fulfilling, wholesome lives. Ah, to be... You just to be. I thought it was great, and now, <laughs> now I'm like fuck. Now I'm like dang. Like I know. I I thought the same thing. I was like, that's a great commercial. Yeah. But if you don't have that context, yeah. like how would we have known? And if someone even said on one of the TikToks I saw, kind of analyzing it, they're like, they didn't do a focus group at all. Like they didn't do a focus group of like, like a bunch of people. It, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And so like. People were like, if they would have done a simple focus group, they probably could have found out from a one woman or another mm -hmm. that this might be 
a very triggering commercial. So That's true. It's just interesting. It was I saw the guy. It was like from a really small marketing firm, and it just it sucks. And like the one who like made the. Mm -hmm. Or like his company did. Yeah. And he was like coming on TikTok to talk about it. He's like, ask me any questions. Yeah. So honestly, I might try to find his account because maybe he's responded to that now. Yeah. And maybe Tubi has. Yeah. Because it's their commercial. But yeah, just craziness. I mean, but I also like, I don't know how much you can blame them. Like think of like if, mm -hmm. I think of like if the game goes bad or like, you know, if something happened and then someone's mad about the game, like- that could still flare up those same emotions. So it's not all like TV's yeah. fault, but it's it definitely, I can definitely see how it like I know. sparked, yeah, anger and like just <sighs> we people need getting annoyed by it. And yeah, absolutely. We need to like, and I think this is where our generation is really hopefully changing how we raise our boys. Yeah. And like that toxic masculinity and that aggression and that yeah. getting volatile and like angry yeah and like yeah mental health issues can kind of contribute to stuff like that but I think we're raising our boys better now to where they can actually yeah. handle their big emotions yeah at least a lot of people are and so I hope that as we age like all of these rates of these crazy things will go down but yeah and I mental health so. help will get better and easier yeah. But okay, moving along from 2B, because okay. we got a bunch of other good ones. I have like 10 tabs okay. open. This is the last one we're going to read before we head to the Blackhawks game tonight, because I'm almost out of wine and I still have to get dressed and we just have a lot to do. So this next one, am I the asshole for suggesting I would petition the court if my wife named our son without my consent? Wait, petition the court? What does that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> We're going to find out. Okay. I, 26 male, am a third. As in of the three, <laughs> it's like Roman numerals. It's so stupid. It's like I, I, I variety. You know how it's like oh, junior. The third. Okay. It's like senior, junior, the fir the second, the yeah. third, okay. like all that he's, stuff. He's a third. Yeah. <laughs> My girl. <laughs> I'm a third. I'm a third. I'm like, okay, we, we got to explain it for everyone because I was kind of like, what the fuck? Yeah. It. Okay. My grandfather had the same name as his dad. My dad has the same name as my grandfather. And I have the same name as all of them. Which, wouldn't he be the fourth? He'd technically be- Well, I guess the first one, you don't say someone the first. Oh, but yeah, you would say the second, the third. He should be the fourth. Yeah. I think he's supposed to be the fourth. Hmm. And I have the same name as all of them. We've all gone by some sort of varied version. My great-grandfather was just Richard. My grandfather goes by his middle name. And dad, for an inexplicable reason, chose to go by Dick. And I'm called <laughs> And I'm called by my last name. And when I found out I was having a son, I thought it was a no-brainer that we would carry on this tradition. I'm still very close with my family, and I work for my dad. So breaking this mold isn't some easy line to cross. In fact, I'd say it's one of my all-around deal breakers, which is why I was so shocked when my wife, who already knew about the name tradition, disclosed to me that she didn't want to be the fourth in this long-standing tradition. She has tried to compromise by changing his middle name. I told her that's not how traditions like these go. I said we could give him any nickname she wanted him to have, within reason. And she said his friends still likely would call him something else. There's been lots of back and forth, including passive aggressive name lists left up where I can see them. It came to a head yesterday when my wife informed me that upon reading up online, in some states, women are given the paperwork and their spouses are asked to leave the room. So she could name him what she wanted. This really hurt me. She knows what the name means to me, as well as what my family name could do for our son's future. I responded by saying that if that were the case, I'd have no choice but to petition the court for a name change. She then flipped her story, said she was joking, and called me terrible for even thinking about taking her to court over something like this. 
Am I the asshole? Wait, you can do that? Like, take someone to court to change your baby's name? (laughs) Sounds like a Judge Judy case. What? But honestly, you can sue people and take them to court for anything, I feel. Oh, my God. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, some of the stuff you see on Judge Judy in those shows is insane. Yeah. Wait, so it's the guy talking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he's the asshole. Like, okay, your kid's getting your last name already. And then if he also has to have your first name too, like, and no one even, no one in like the second, third, no one goes by that name anyway. So like, what, what does it matter? Like, I get the tradition, but like, how long are you going to go? Like, you're going (laughs) to, I know, I, I I get tradition, but sometimes traditions are just like weird. They don't, I'm, I'm on her side. I think like. I kind of think they both need to, like, get their shit together. They're kind of acting... I keep forgetting about Edna Mode. Insane about this name. And it's like, you're... Okay, you're going to kick him out of the room and then pick a name that he doesn't want either. Like, this is both of your kid. Like, yeah. you can't threaten him with that. And it's like, you did... You were serious about that. You were absolutely serious about that. That's insane. And then so he's, like, like <laughs> coming back and he's like, well, I'm going to petition the court then if you kick me out of the room and pick a name, blah, 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 blah. Like... yeah. They're both so deranged. Like, get your shit together. You both need to pick this name. Yeah. You can't do it civilly. How the fuck are you even having a kid together? (laughs) I didn't even think about that. Like, Like, yeah, how are you going to decide on anything? You can't decide on your, like, kid's name. How? Yeah. How do you decide on anything else in your life or, like, big decisions? Together. (laughs) Like, what is this? I guess name is a big thing, but, like, it's not like life or death. Like it's just a name and you technically he could, your kid just could just change it later anyway. So you can. And like your kid might grow up and be like, I don't even like this name anymore. So I'm going to change it. I don't want to be the fourth or the fifth or whatever the hell he's it's actually like going to be. And queens. That's what I think of is like Henry the fourth or I don't know. I don't know. Like, Um, Oh, you know, like kings and like royals. Mm -hmm. They're always like, I don't know. They all have the same names and they're all just the third, the fourth, the whatever. I dated a fifth. Who? David Long Grannis, the fifth. The fifth. (laughs) He was the fifth. And I. Oh, see, like, that's like cringy. Like, I hear that and I'm like, oh. Well, he was. Like, it sounds so (laughs) conceited and like, so just like, sounds like stuffy and like. I don't know. I don't like the. the it's fifth. interesting. It's really interesting. And like, I just. Did he write that on things? Like, when he, he signed no, his name? No, it was just Dave Grannis. Like, he wouldn't even go by David. He just went by Dave. The fifth. The fifth. I didn't know he was the fifth. Yeah. And that's why his number, like, he played, he played football and hockey. And I think his number in both was five. Because he's the fifth. Because he's the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean,. Oh my god! Okay, so I just texted the him too. That's who I was fifth. typing. You were texting. I was him? texting him. Oh, so was his kid gonna be? So I just asked him the six because I just yeah. So I go. Oh I haven't god. talked to this is like my ex boyfriend. Wait, from, did he respond? Yeah, <laughs> he just responded. <laughs> okay, now I'm excited. So oh I, my god, I literally just texted him. I was like, super random, but do you plan on naming your kid the six? And he goes, <laughs> naming it the six. <laughs> like, 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 but you no, know what I, know I mean? He, you, he I got it. He got it. I was trying yeah. to, I wasn't trying to type forever. And I already distracted I know, you. You already scared me when you did that. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, up to the future mother. I'm not sure which way I'm leaning, to be yes. honest. Definitely not a bill. Oh, I think he meant hill. Definitely not a hill I would die on. Yes. Like, quote, my kid has to be David Long Grannis the six. So TBD. Good answer. At the solid. Good answer. Solid. Yeah. You gotta choose your battles and like really you're gonna Yeah. Yeah. He's a good he's a good guy. He Okay, that was a good answer. High school Dave. <laughs> Dave, if you're listening, high school Dave, not so nice to Morgan, but he's he's grown. <laughs> Apparently. Does he even have a girlfriend? I think so. I see oh. him on their Instagram. Oh. Dave is like one ex that I like actually I could invite to my wedding and like it would be a good time. Like Dave is He's very nice. Okay. Yeah. Text him back. Thank you for your participation in two hot takes. Yeah. <laughs> Good answer too. <laughs> could have gone, could have gone bad. The sixth. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of like it. I think it's like, it is a cool tradition, 
But I remember talking with Dave in high school because, like, I think everyone, when you're in a relationship, you, like, if we had a kid, like, oh, names. And, like, mm-hmm. I mean, in grad school, like, I had friends that had iPhone notes with, like, names that they loved for what? their babies. Yeah. <laughs> so I have an iPhone note now where, like, I have so you names. you have a list of names. Yeah, because after I saw theirs, I was like, that's a great idea because what if I forget some? Oh, see, I... Yeah, but I feel like they're going to, like, go in and out of, like... Style. Yeah. Mine are very out there and Morgan gender the neutral. Second. No, I wouldn't. Morgan... No, it would be Morgan Ashley Marie. The second. Yeah. That's hard. Marie, I'm Marie, too. Yeah. I feel like half of girl, half of the population oh, so is Marie. Many. Marie or Anne. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So many. So, I don't know. But I remember talking about it, and I'm like, I don't... Like, Dave Granis, okay, but, like... Long for a middle name, L O N G. Like, wait, what? His middle name is Long. Like, L O N G. Like, oh, that's so long. That's a long drive. All I think about is something else. Long dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they gave him the middle name. No, he's the fifth. <laughs> so it started from. Oh, so it's like a long line of. Yeah, it's a long that, line of that's David why they gave him. Wait, David Long? Yeah, because... Oh, they're all David Long. They're all. That's. I think oh, that's the oh, tradition. It's the first and the middle. It has to be everything. It, I think it's all or nothing. What? Yeah. David Long. Yeah, Long's weird. I know. So I remember talking in high school where I'm like, I'm not crazy about the middle name, but like we can do everything else. And then I think it was the same thing where it was like, well, it won't count. And that's what his wife is saying too. Yeah. It's just like, it's. I don't know. It's not lining up. But these people huh. need to get their shit together. It's... yeah. It's okay to break traditions. We can all do yeah. it. Like Jordan, you named your little sister. You guys all got to vote. Oh yeah, we got to vote. And I, her name is Brooke. Did Christina. You, did you vote on Brooke? I did not choose Brooke. Oh. I, yeah. What'd you pick? I don't remember. Oh my God. But there's God. five of us. It must have been like three versus two. Because I don't think I was the only one that said no. Really? But, or no, wait. She was the fifth one. So never mind. It was four of us. <laughs> and my dad, I guess. So. And no, mom. five of you. Your mom, your dad. And then four of us. You, Steven, Danielle, five. Jenna. Oh my God, you have so many siblings. Six. So there were six people voting. Okay. So yeah, she didn't get a name until like a week after she was born. I don't even know like babies could wait that long without a name. Yeah. Wait, so wasn't I telling you my grandma's baby girl on her birth certificate? That's right. Because she like left the hospital, didn't have a name yet. Oh my God. She's just baby. I mean, my birth certificate is in pencil, so. That is insane. (laughs) That's so crazy. In Canada, I guess you just write it in pencil. Like back in the day, 1994, I I guess. I swear it's my mom's handwriting in pencil on my birth certificate. So that's nuts. Do you know what you almost were? If you wouldn't have been Jordan, what would your name? Devin. But my dad didn't like that name. I hate, no. You don't like it? No. I feel like it's not that different from Jordan though. Cause it's like a girl name, boy name. I guess Devin can be both. Yeah. I think I had a girl in... When I was in Massachusetts, I had a friend named Devin. But then also my neighbor in Massachusetts name was Devin. It was a boy. One was a girl. Yeah. One was a boy. But I don't know anyone in like Minnesota or any anywhere else named Devin. I just know boys named Devin. I was almost yeah. Danielle. Really? Yeah. Which I I could kind of see. Don't you. like that name for me I at all. I could kind of see you as a Danielle. No, I don't. I don't. I can't see it. Morgan fits you better, but I could kind of. I don't know why. Would you change your name today if you could like. Have you ever thought about a no. name if you would change it? No. You just feel Jordan? I just don't care. That's how I feel about Morgan. Well, no, I I guess I do care. But like, I don't think anything else really fits me. Yeah. Like, I can't picture my name being not Morgan. No, I can't either. It's too weird. Like, my mom and like growing up, it was like Jordan was the boy name. But I was the boy version, like mm. A-N. And then you started seeing people be like... Y N for jo- for the girl version. Yeah, my mom was like, "We could change your name." I was like, "I don't care." Like it's <laughs> it's all good. What is it? Mean? And actually, for work, I think it works out to my benefit if people think I'm a boy anyway. So I email people all day, mm-hmm. and I get he, Mister, like what? I, I think it works out to my benefit. It does. So. <laughs> it one hundred percent does. Yeah, it's been studied. Like Mister McIver. Like I'm like okay. Sure. Cool. I'm just going to go along with it. And then I get on a call or meet them in person and they're usually shocked. And it's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Got to let the patriarchy work for you sometimes, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, the top comment on this one is you're the asshole. 
quote, because that's how it's done, is not a valid reason to name your child something. She is trying to compromise with you by giving you the middle name. You are not. I'm guessing the baby will have your last name. There's no reason the baby needs your first name as well. What could a first name do for your son's future? Give your child his own identity. Don't just make him number four. I agree. (laughs) Someone goes, what can it do for his future? Mess up mail and paperwork. But I think, actually, though, I think there is like some things where it works. Cause like, so my brother in law, his, him and his dad have the same name. Mm -hmm. And I forget what it was. It was with like, I don't know if it was with a, like a ticket or I can't even remember now, but it was something where like him and his dad had the same name. So he just kind of like his dad had an account or something and he was just like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh my God. I can't remember what it was. It wasn't like anything like bad, but it was like, it was just a lot easier. Like, oh mm-hmm. yeah, we have the same name. So it just, yeah. I can't remember what it was. Stealing his online like, order? No, but it was like something with, now I can't even remember, but. Bank. But there are <laughs> some like benefits if like you have the same name. Mm-hmm. Maybe there, maybe it's illegal things. I don't even know. I feel like. <laughs> Maybe you're Maybe. not supposed to do it, but I'm not sure. There is an edit on this, and OP goes, we did discuss this prior to marriage and getting pregnant. She agreed. I wouldn't be shocked by her feelings on the matter if we hadn't talked about it first. So it sounds like she was like, yeah, we'll name it. We'll name it the same name. We'll name the, sa- the baby the same name as you. It can be the fourth or the fifth, whatever it's actually supposed to be. Yeah. And now she's like switching it up. Because OP kind of said, like, this would have been a deal breaker for me. Like, which is kind of crazy. Honestly, I think if someone would say that, someone said that to me, like, it's a deal breaker. If, like, my baby doesn't get my, I I think I would think they were joking. Like, probably. I, I don't know. Maybe she thought it was a joke or, or she was like, well, that's not really going to happen, but I'll just, like, agree to Whatever. it now and then he'll forget about it later. Or yeah. I don't, I don't know, but. It's such a dumb move to do. Like a deal breaker for your kid not having your name. Like it, they get your last name. That is true. The girl does all the work. Literally creates the baby. Mm-hmm. Does all the work. Like their body gets destroyed. And then the baby takes the guy's name. The last name already. Yeah. So like. And then it's going to take his first name too. Mm-hmm. Like it's like you did all the work and then they get all the credit. Yeah. Interesting world. That's patriarchy yet again. Yeah. But I saw um, a video from a lesbian couple and they mm-hmm. they were talking and they're like, I don't know why you straights haven't figured it out yet. Like you should be taking the per- like the cooler last name. Oh, yeah. And so like Lauren. Because there's some bad last names. There's so many bad <laughs> last names out there. Sorry, guys, if yours is <laughs> bad. But I literally I was talking to a guy once upon a time and his last name was Hyman. That's a real last name. It literally, and I felt so bad because like he was such a nice guy and I actually really liked him, but his last name gave me the ick. Is this weird? Morgan Hyman? <laughs> no. So like there's this concept of like either you pick the cooler name mm-hmm. or some couples, even like some straight couples I've seen that like they'll pick their own last name. I had, yeah. Like that's cool. I had, so I had a boss one time in college, my like, when I worked retail, my boss was, she was like very free spirit. And I don't even know what her husband's last name was, but like they, yeah, they got married and they just chose their own last name. I kind of like it. If both of their last names sucked, like it made sense. I forget hers was like white feather or something. They chose something that was like in a, from a different language that meant, or it meant something else. I have no idea. That's really interesting. They were, yeah, kind of in their own worlds, but like, like that great for them. Like, yeah. If it works for them, like. I know. But I can see, well, last names are different though. Cause like, I can see how people, you don't want your last name to like die. Like, yeah. Some people are so crazy about that. I mean, my family, so we have four girls, one boy, Steven, you better uh, keep the name going. Cause. I wouldn't give up your last name, though. It's so cool. I mean, I like my last name, but... I'd keep it. I'm not... It's a good one. I'll just stay single. (laughs) 
<laughs> I think it's what's going to happen. Jordan is single though. And she lives in Chicago. So if, if anyone knows any good dudes in Chicago. Who aren't scared of dogs. Jordan does have a, a dog that <laughs> that's very that slow needs to warm. She, yeah. She needs a boyfriend. Yeah. My dog. Yeah. She just needs people. She or, needs more people. Or a trainer. <laughs> if anyone's a dog yeah, trainer dog in Chicago. <laughs> any single dog trainers out there? I know um, Audrey, one of our listeners, is a dog trainer, but she doesn't live in Chicago. Yeah. So if I, there's any I need all trainers, the help I can get. Seriously. Jordan I McIver need, on I Instagram. Need, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> I need help. Please, please help. Morgan is the first visitor I've had over in... Quite some time. Yeah. Literally the only person at the last apartment. Yeah. <laughs> and also special. at this apartment. So Yeah, she did good with Justin too when we you're stayed good last with her. I or like she doesn't mind you. She doesn't like you, but she doesn't hate you. Dog whisperer. And she hates everyone. Yeah, no, she hasn't bitten me, so we're good. Yeah. So. Um <laughs> Yeah, they're just there's there's not a lot of interesting comments beyond that. Everyone in the comments is picking up. They're like, wait, the baby would actually be number five. Great grandfather one, grandfather two. Everyone's just trying to correct him. Three, <laughs> OP four, baby five. So so he doesn't even know what number he is. So why does it matter? Honestly, it matter? I could see this family being so stupid they messed it up. Probably, I could see it because it is kind of confusing where it's like senior, junior, the second. No, it goes from senior, junior to the third. Oh, I forgot about the senior, junior. Yeah. Because then once you get past senior, junior, then does the does junior become senior when you have a junior? Or you're like junior, junior. I don't know. We're going to need to Junior, fill junior, out. junior. You just keep- <laughs> I don't know. I'm so curious now. Because Weird. when you fill out those like things, like even when you buy an airline ticket, it's like your prefix or whatever, where it's like doctor, you have to put senior. That in there. Yeah. It asks you when you buy stuff like plane tickets. What's the difference between miss, like M-I-S-S, and M-S? One is, don't quote me. (laughs) We're going to have to Google this. But I thought M-I-S-S was for like a younger woman that's unmarried. So that's still me. And M-S is actually Ms, where it's a single woman but could be divorced. Matronly. Yeah. So I'm still M-I-S-S. Yes. Wow. Someone the other day called me Ms. Or Ma'am. on a dating app said Ms. Chicago. M.S. Chicago. Wow. So that's like matronly, isn't it? Yeah. I think of like teachers like in school were like yep. either M.R.S. or M.S. It's, no, it's Mrs. Oh, my God. Apparently you should learn the difference because calling someone the other can be offensive. Yeah, if you're calling someone old, if you call them. <laughs> yeah. So the meaning of miss when attached to a name has a title of respect for a female child and an Ch- unmarried oh, ch- woman. It okay. has been used by itself or combined with a name. Miss Penelope Edwards. Excuse me, miss. Um, it's more formal. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Misses, we all know. M-R-S is a married woman. Mm-hmm. M-S what if you don't know whether someone is married or not? Unlike Miss, M-I-S-S, or Mrs., M-R-S, Miss, pronounced Ms., M-S, mm-hmm. doesn't indicate a woman's marital status, so it became a good option when you didn't have that context. Okay, so okay, it's just kind of a, a shot in the dark. I don't like that the women, like, it for girls, it changes when you get married. How come it's Mr. for guys all the time? Just Mr. That's the only option. Oh. Um, but, but like if you're married, then you get a different. So this is interesting. What's it called? Like a prefix. Prefix. I yeah. was a pronoun. That was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a new one that's been added though. And it was added to the Merriam-Webster unabridged in mm-hmm. 2016. And it's MX, pronounced oh. mix. And it's to kind of be... The honorific functions as a gender neutral alternative to titles like Mr. and Miss. So mix. Wait. This is the first time I've ever heard of this. Mix? It doesn't indicate a marital status. MX. This is Mix Schaefer. And they head up the financial department. Mix. If someone, but if like I was like talking to someone and they said mix something, I would think that's their name. Mix. It, like it's going to take a long time before that gets like, I mean, it was put in there in 2016 and I've never heard about it. No, I've never heard of it. 
So they they, they need like memos. How do we sign up for right. like a countrywide memo? But that's kind. Of, I, I feel like that's kind of like Latin X, right? Yeah, because everything is gender based. Latina, yeah. Latina, like it's, Latina, Latina. So I guess that's the similar. Yeah. So interesting. Learn something new every day. Yeah. Every day. That is it. We're taking a break. We're headed to the Chicago Blackhawks game. Hopefully they lose. Yeah. Go Vegas. <laughs> Jordan wants a good draft pick, you know? Tank for Bedard. Yeah. <laughs> so we are Just off. Kidding. See you tomorrow, technically, in like an ad break for those listening and watching, but... The sun will be up when we start this again. So be back soon. Wait, first I have to watch that Edna Mode video <laughs> just to get in the like. Get in the mood. Okay. Pull yourself together. It's like this too. <laughs> I just found out it's a guy that voices Edna Mode. Edna Mode. I love her. She's so cute. Fashion icon. <laughs> Um, last night we had a good night. Went to the Blackhawks game. Solid time. We have some weather today to be determined if I end up leaving Chicago on a plane because Minnesota is also expected to get like 20 inches of snow. So it's a good time. <laughs> good time we're having here. But uh, are you ready to get back into these stories? I'm ready. Bow, 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 bow. I don't know that. I don't know what that is. It's the DJ horn. No. I have it on my sound pad. I'll play it for you. Yeah, it's a thing. Okay. It's a thing. You okay. like cuter. And, oh, yeah. well, thank you. Peppier. Jordan's uh, arch enemy, I guess, is like no. Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> I just so, don't like her little like sound effects for everything. Mm, yeah. She makes the same DJ noise the burp, 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 that I do. So <laughs> It sounds like a dog or something. <laughs> well, okay. So I have, I have it's like one. like Blue's Clues. Yeah. So I have one that's Blue's Clues and the one that's <gasps> the DJ horn, but it's blues clues and then it's like the dj horn yeah subtle subtle differences here yeah this story probably is one that made me the most mad out of any recent stories i've read okay it is uh it's a doozy so it's from am i the asshole it was posted six days ago it has forty thousand of votes about and it is titled Am I the asshole for calling my mom when my husband refused to listen to me? I, 26 female, recently moved into my first home. I am also four months pregnant with our first baby. This pregnancy has been very hard. I have horrible morning sickness. It reached a really bad point where I passed out, hit my head, and my doctor admitted me to the hospital for a week. <sighs> That's really scary. Oh my God. When I got home, my husband allowed his brother's family to move in to two of our three bedrooms. They were evicted. I don't know why. One room, that was my office, was tossed into our room. Papers everywhere. The house was a complete wreck. Trash, dirty clothes, used diapers. I started to cry. It was like a light switch had flipped and my husband was no longer the same. My husband told me it, quote, wasn't that bad. My reply was, quote, fine, then you should have the house cleaned up before I wake up. Completely exhausted, I fell asleep for four hours. When I woke up and went to get a drink of water, I couldn't. Every glass we own is scattered around the whole house. They didn't clean a single thing. I passive aggressively started to pick up the dirty dishes and washed them. The following morning, I was trying my best to work when their kids were crying nonstop, banging on the walls and so on. Their mom was in her room for hours, ignoring them. When my husband came home, he was upset with me over how I didn't make his brother's wife feel welcome in our home by helping with their kids when she was tired. <laughs> then continued to complain how nothing was done while he was at work all day in the house Yep, the same one he didn't clean. That led to a fight where I told him, quote, I am too sick to have company and they need to leave. To which he replied, they are his family and he won't kick them out. I started to cry again. I was beyond frustrated, exhausted. I just physically couldn't do it anymore. I called my mom asking if I could come stay with her. 
telling her the whole story in front of my husband, who at this point was completely shocked, angry. Also, I could tell he wasn't sure what to do. Well, my mom came with my brothers. I have three older brothers. My mom, super angry, told my husband, quote, since your family can stay, so can we. (laughs) My mom quickly took charge. I was sent to bed. My brothers started cleaning, complaining loudly at how disgusting my brother-in-law's family is, along with what a horrible husband my husband is for putting me through this while I am sick. I got a text message from my mother-in-law for calling me an asshole, for not helping my husband clean up the house, and putting my brother-in-law in an uncomfortable position by having my mom boss him around. <laughs> oh my god. Carlo's reaction too. <laughs> and then I think that's where it originally stopped Uh there's a bunch of edits now so we get even more detail but that's where it stopped and was like am i the asshole on the original like before the updates oh my god i can't wait i kind of love the her like family coming in and like just (laughs) i love this taking over i absolutely love it oh my god i love it it's such a power move i'm just picturing like the tiniest little house with like well, I don't know if it's a tiny, but I just picture like way too small for the amount of people that are in there. And just like, yeah, yeah, I could not. I couldn't do that. Mm-mm. No. I would be losing my marbles. It's hard enough if it was your own family. But then yeah. when it's like your husband's fit, like. Well, and it's like, yeah, they're being really nice and they're helping, which amazing. Like that's really Wait, nice because they, they got evicted or whatever. Oh, oh yeah. Like the brother in law. I thought you meant like the family, family moving in was helping. No, no <laughs> like, what are they helping? <laughs> they're doing the exact opposite. Can you imagine having a guest come over and they have little kids who are still in diapers and they just leave that's the disgusting. used diapers? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know what planet they're from, but that is so so gross. That's disgusting. Like, I would, I'd kick them out. I would kick them out. Yeah. Like, I'm sure there's hotels nearby. Like, I, <laughs> I would absolutely go nuts. I mean, yeah. No, I could not. No. Just imagine the smell in the place. If there's dirty diapers everywhere. Insert like cat gag gif. Like cat having a hairball. Like, yeah, that's what I feel on the inside. Just That's disgusting. I just think it's really 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 messed up on him like she's pregnant she just got out of the hospital where she was kept at the hospital for a week i forgot about that part too like don't you think she should come home after a hospital stay like that to a quiet mm -hmm. calm clean house and be taken care of instead of taking care of his whole family (laughs) what's not clicking for him yeah And then to like blame her and be like, why aren't you cleaning? Why aren't you cleaning the house? Why didn't you make my brother's wife feel more welcome? Oh my God. Some people just live in a different world, I think. Like, I don't understand how that's like. I don't get it. Okay to, I, yeah. I like really. Staying at someone else's house too and just like leaving a mess or just like, I don't know. Mm -mm. I'm like, I keep my stuff in a neat little pile in the corner. Like, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) No, I feel bad. I feel bad for having like the podcast stuff out. I'm just like, oh my God, no. I'm just like, you always want to be a good guest. Yeah. And they're doing the exact opposite. And then you're pregnant. So like not feeling well. Like I already, I like my own space. I can't imagine being pregnant and not feeling good and being exhausted and then having to entertain and like take care of people that are not usually at your, like having just like permanent guests. Mm -mm. I love having you here, but you're like the third guest in like two weeks. And it's kind of like. It's, oh, you're ready for your it's own exhausting. space. It's exhausting. You're, <laughs> you're ready for your own space. <laughs> no, I saw your little calendar that you have on the wall with all your guest stuff. And I'm like. I had to start writing it down. You got to like, just be just, exhausted. <laughs> and it's not. And I didn't even do that much either because it's just. But it's still just like, I want the apartment to be clean. It's like, okay, I wash the sheets really quick. But then it's also just like having people in your space. Yeah. Like, it's nice having people around. And I love seeing, you know, you and my, when my sister's here, my mom was here. But 
I need that time alone. Like it's yeah. exhausting. Like, and cause I always feel like I have to entertain or like plan things. And that's not a natural like thing that I'm good at or like to do. Like I'm like, someone make the plan. I'm down for whatever. I'll go wherever. Tell me yeah. like, bro, I'll do whatever. Like, I don't care. But making the plans, that's like, how long did it take me to make a reservation the other day? Like two hours. <laughs> But no, I feel the same way. That's what's like Just hard. Like having people over, it's, yeah. it's work. Like, And then if they're also bad guests, that's even worse. Miserable. No, and I feel bad because like I want friends to like be able to come visit. But it is nice where it's like if you want to come visit, feel free to bring someone else because like I also am working a lot. Or like yeah. if I just like want to nap, I don't feel bad where I'm like you flew to LA and all we're doing is sitting at my house. Yeah. That's why like, I love coming here. Cause like we've just had the chillest week and it's like, I am so happy sitting on someone's couch and not like, I don't have to go adventure and be busy nonstop. Yeah. I don't need that. Yeah. And some people would be sad by that. Like Alejandra is totally the opposite where she's like, if I'm in a new city, mm -hmm. I'm going to get out. I'm going to go walk around. I'm going to be busy, busy, busy mm -hmm. all the time. Like yeah. we went to Austin for like a podcast thing and I was like super ill the next day. Mm -hmm. I had like the worst cramps of my life. I was dying. And so I was sitting in the hotel room all day. Like I didn't, I didn't care. Like I wanted to be rested for performing and mm -hmm. like going out after. And she got up at like 8 a.m. and walked all over Austin by herself. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm so sorry. Like no one went with you. And she was like, no, it's fine. Like I just wanted to bop around. There's like different kinds of travelers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's like the, yeah. The re the relaxing just, travelers or the go, go, go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm used to the go, go, go. That's my family is the go, go, go. It's the from morning to night, constant walking. You see a lot. You do a lot, and which is great. And like it's fun, but it's exhausting. Yeah. It's like it's. Yeah. <laughs> one way one way to explain Jordan's family really well is they are the family that does the Thanksgiving 5Ks. And I think based on that, you can get a good idea of their uh their grit and their mentality. Oh yeah. They're they're all very active people, mm -hmm. runners. Yeah. I'm uh, trying to marry into like a mimosa um Thanksgiving field. Maybe that's why I'm still single. It's because of the Thanksgiving 5K. No one wants to come. <laughs> no one wants to marry yeah. into a Thanksgiving no one, 5k family no uh-uh <laughs> honestly though like you might you could find someone that's a runner and like you just wait at the finish line with the mimosa and the sign yeah you're just the supportive wife sister. I kind of I like I actually I didn't hate the 5k this past year though oh so maybe maybe so it's I'm turning on you. I know I'm turning into mm. yeah the top comment on this post is wait your mother-in-law called to fuss at you for involving your mother. <laughs> There's this pot kettle thing. You know that old saying? Like that's no. the pot calling the kettle black, but the pot's black too. So okay. it's like you're a hypocrite. Yeah. Not the asshole, 1000%. But house guests in a shared home requires two yeses and only one no. Both of you agree or it shouldn't happen. Your husband has treated you abominably. I'm not sure if I could deal with that, honestly. Can you go stay with your mom? And OP respond and goes, I agree with the two yeses. I wasn't even asked to say no. Which is so weird that he just sprung this on her coming out of the hospital. But I can see though, like with families, like mm -hmm. you, you know, you have to, you know, you have this relationship with your family and then you have like the relationship with your wife and like you want to please both, but but your wife is pregnant and just came out of the hospital. Like that should like, mm -hmm. I mean, that should be higher than like, but your family got affected. So it's like a hard. I know you don't want to see them on the streets, but you have this priority of your wife. I mean, can you just like help out with a hotel? Like. There like, seems like there could have been more of like a compromise or like the mother-in-law, the mother-in-law, she's, she loves to get involved. Why didn't they go stay with her? Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Like, she's is there calling. any other family members that they, he could stay with? Like, she just came home from the hospital and she's pregnant. <laughs> like, Dude, being pregnant is no easy feat. Uh, oh, my God. I, can't, I literally can't imagine. But then I feel like he just, like, he goes to work. So then he didn't experience what she had to deal with. And then yeah. comes home and is like, 
I didn't know that. Like, what issues? Like, I didn't experience any. But she's the one dealing with everything. Yeah. And she's pregnant. Like, no. Mm-mm. Oh, my God. When there, I'm pregnant, I want to be like, can you give me a glass of what? Can you, like, I make Did you it- say, can you give me a glass of wine? No water. <laughs> oh, I was like, Jordan, you can't have that. No, like, I want someone waiting on me when I'm pregnant. Like, I'm making. You want to be pampered. I'm making a baby. Like, yeah. I'm, yeah, that's working. Like, I'm making a human. So, I'm working 24-7. Yeah. Give me the so, love. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be cleaning the house and, like. Hell no. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. But we do have a bunch of edits. I haven't read any of them because I wasn't on the post when I first found it. And so it goes, edited to add update. When my mother-in-law showed up, she was super angry outside. I could hear shouting, but couldn't understand what she said. Once inside, she was shocked. My house looked really bad. My brother-in-law lied to her about what happened. My mother-in-law quickly started to help my mom in the bossing mode. My house is not just cleaned, but deep cleaned. My brother-in-law and his kids are now staying with mother-in-law. Good. Look at that. Good. She didn't know about the eviction, My in-laws helped them financially a couple of months ago. My mother-in-law was not happy about it. Sister-in-law refused to come out of the bedroom. She would scream through the door, but that was about it until her family came to pick her up. Last little bit, I did talk to my husband. He seemed very remorseful. I asked for some space, so he is staying at a hotel. He asked to come by and talk tonight. My mom and dad are here. Both moms felt like I should have someone here since I am sick. Both moms have set up a meal plan where they trade off who will bring in dinner. It was my mother-in-law's idea. Thank you for all the advice. I truly appreciate it. Love all of that. Yeah. And we even have more. It keeps just getting juicier. Oh my God. Wait, it's bad again? I don't know. I just like to have like an update after an update. You're like something happened because otherwise like they don't usually share. Mm -hmm. So... Talked with my husband, summed up since it lasted four hours. It was a hard talk. He is remorseful. Brother-in-law was only supposed to stay for a couple of nights, then leave. Originally, he thought they would be gone before I got home. He said he is tired and emotionally upset himself. When I originally passed out, my husband left to help a friend move. He came home and found me. He said he has no idea how long I was on the floor hurt. He was originally scared that I had died. Wow. Since then, he has had nightmares on top of dealing with family drama. He admitted to dumping his frustration onto me when it's not my fault. He begged me for another chance. The next steps, we are still separated. He plans on staying at my brother's house in his casita. We are going to go to marriage counseling and individual counseling. He asked if he could come when the home nurse comes each night and to my doctor's appointments. I did agree to that. Update on brother-in-law. His wife... Oh, Oh boy. (laughs) His wife admitted to having an affair. She told him she got married too soon and doesn't want the responsibilities of being a mom anymore. I am not sure what will happen with him and his kids, but I am shocked that she feels this way, especially with her kids. She doesn't want the responsibility of being a mom anymore. What? That came out of left field. Now, Because now I already forgot about everything you were saying before that. Now I'm just like the- What? The (laughs) sister-in-law or whatever. Like, I think- That's insane. I think if you had a third microphone, just put it down by her. I know. She'd get the best ASMR noises. Hmm. (gasps) Like uh, Dory from Nemo when she's doing the whale noises, but Harlow dog version. Oh, my God. She's so dramatic. Um, (laughs) I'm not talking to you, Harlow. Harlow. Every time I try to talk, she just like groans. She doesn't want you to talk. She's like, shut up. She's like, I'm trying to take a nap. I've had a stressful day of literally nothing. <laughs> nothing. I feel like that family that got evicted and then moved in, I think that there's a lot of issues mm-hmm. 
And and then I think it's like the her husband didn't really know how to deal with that correctly. Mm-hmm. And then it affected his relationship. And yeah. It's like family dynamics and stuff. It's just like then dramas are tough. It's weird. I think too, you see this a lot of times. Like I found this subreddit recently. It's called Regretful Parents where there's a lot of parents that just like regret having kids or they regret having one kid like more because this daughter, like the kid is a terror and like all this crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely people out there, but you just wonder too, like I think a lot of times you'll see people that wanted to be child free Mm -hmm. and didn't want kids at all and get pressured into having kids and then they regret it. And it's like, if you want kids, but yeah. your partner doesn't, you're not a good match. Yeah. And like, I feel like, especially nowadays, like however you want to run your life, that's how you should run your life. If you want mm-hmm. kids at 20, you want to be that young, active parent, do it. Yeah. But something we were talking about last night is like, it's okay to also wait. Like, yeah. enjoy your 20s and your mm-hmm. early 30s traveling. Mm-hmm. It's okay to wait. And I was telling you about this TikTok I saw where this woman, she was like, um, reasons why I regret waiting until I yeah. was 35 to have my first child. Yeah. And then the music changes and she's like dancing in a different way. And she goes, none. Like, I don't regret it at all. Yeah. I loved it. And all the comments were like, yes, I did so much in my twenties. It was incredible. And now I have two kids. They're healthy. They're great. Mm-hmm. No issues. Yeah. So it's like, do it how you want to do it. Yeah. Like you don't have to do things the traditional way anymore. There's no rush to have kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I love to like, have you seen the Chelsea Handler uh, videos that she's had? Oh my God. Yeah. Cause, she, Cause she's like a childless or I forget what she said, what her wording is like yeah. her, her child free life or whatever. Oh my and God. she's like, Oh, I'm skiing. I'm scuba diving. I'm like, yeah, my life sucks. I'm on top of a mountain. And then I'm like, and just like, I know it's, it was amazing. It was so, but so you never, good. you always think of like, Oh, it's like someone that's like over like, I don't know, 30, 40. Like once you can't have kids, anymore, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, and you're single and you don't have kids. And like, what do you do with your life? Mm-hmm. It's like you live your life. <laughs> like, yeah. what do you mean? You, what do you do with your like you work, you like enjoy your you travel, you like you don't. I mean, you have a lot more free time or not necessarily free time, but just yeah. Well, definitely free time. <laughs> but like all the above, you can yeah. It's just like with kids, there's so many different things you have to think about, and I mean they kind of run your life, especially while they're like little. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, yeah. But it's it's like this in society. It's such a thing of like, oh, why don't you want kids? Like I, I don't know. I think there's a lot to be said, like where it's like, if you don't want kids, there's, there are a lot of benefits, honestly. Like, but then some people argue, but like, but what if I get, what happens when I get old and I don't have any family to take care of me? And, Mm -hmm. you know, kids can be super fulfilling. Yeah. They can bring a lot of joy. They can bring a lot of meaning to your life, but like you shouldn't just have kids because you want a caregiver when you're 80. Mm -hmm. like that's not a good reason to have a kid either I did hear something though that made me think it was like when you're like older and then like you don't have any grandkids or Mm -hmm. anything and it it was like that seems kind of sad but I want the option to like Mm -hmm. have kids or not have kids but I'm I think I want kids but like I also don't really know I know it's really it's really tough I think a lot of us in our friend group are at that stage. Like even me and Alejandra talk about it. Like Lauren is probably the only one I know that is like 1000% I want Mm -hmm. kids. I want a lot of kids. Like I want to, I want kids. And I think all of us otherwise are kind of like, well, yeah, like I kind of want kids, but like, uh, I don't know. But like, it's, it's more like toting that line of like, yeah, "Yeah, I want kids, but like, ah, like it's interesting. I, yeah. I don't know how to talk to kids or babies or I don't know what to do around baby. Like I'm awkward. <laughs> I'm so awkward with like little kids or babies or like I'm not naturally like my mom is like amazing. Like she's just like so that's like naturally she's like mm-hmm. m- a mother like I'm very much like she's so good with kids and like loves doing it like loves like taking care of people and like I'm 
like I held my friend's baby and I was like, I want to hold it. But she was like, I, like, I didn't know what to do. Like, it's so <laughs> little. She was like, okay, sit down on the couch. I'll put the pillow here. Put your arm here. I'll put the baby here. Like, I feel like I'm like a little kid, like holding a baby because I like. You didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. No, and the, it's and it's Honestly, like little it's kids. I'm like, what? What do I say to a little kid? Like, it's and everyone's, intimidating. Everyone's like, just talk to them like a normal person. I'm like, no, but you ask them like, oh, how old are you? <laughs> like, you're not gonna ask, and I'm not gonna ask you how old are you? Like, mm-hmm. whenever it's, it's like it's different. Yeah, I'm just, I think it's just because I'm not used to being around kids. Yeah. Once I have some little nieces and nephews, then maybe I'll get like a baby fever yeah. and then I'll want some. But I just, I'm not around it and I don't. So. And also yeah. I think it like, it's not something that like everyone has just like inherently in them. Like there's mm-hmm. some people that like your mom, like you said, is just so nurturing. She's like a great, just yeah. instantly great mom. But I do think some people do have to learn it. Like mm-hmm. this is so embarrassing and maybe it's normal. I don't know. I feel like it's embarrassing, but I don't know how to change a diaper. I never changed any of my nieces or nephews diapers. Like, yeah, they're not my kids. I wasn't offering to go do that. Yeah. Hell no. Hell no. So like, I don't know how to change a diaper. I don't know how to like really burp a baby. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, how do you, how do people learn this when they have kids? Like from what I hear, the parenting classes aren't that great. So like, how do you learn all these? What I think is, what I think is crazy is like, if you have a kid, you Okay, you get Bert. I mean, you can you can do those extra classes, but you don't have to do those classes. No, you, they're not required. You go to the hospital or whatever, give birth, and then they're like, "Okay, bye." Like, and then it's like, <laughs> but if you want to adopt a kid, you have to go through I don't even know how many hours of like so much, which I think is great. But I I feel like in order to have a baby, you should also have to do some sort like mm-hmm. or know certain things. Like, I agree. I mean, because a lot of parents, you know, you buy all the books on like what to expect when expecting whatever. Like, I feel like Danielle has been like Googling everything and just like reading (laughs) a lot because it's like things that you don't think about until you're pregnant or having a baby or something that like, yeah, it's just all these like weird little things that you don't, you wouldn't know unless Mm -hmm. you had a baby or like have someone to take care of or like. Yeah. Like, I feel like having my, when I was eight and my sis, little sister was a baby, like I felt more comfortable with a baby that my sister who's pregnant right now, she was more comfortable when she was like 10 years old with a baby than she is now. Cause she hasn't been around. No. And now she's having her own kid and like trying to relearn everything that like she kind of picked <laughs> up when like my little sister was born. Yeah. Cause their age gap is what? Like 10 years? 10 years. Yeah. yeah. So she was like 10 when your little sister was yeah. a baby. So I could kind of like yeah. take care of her a little bit. Like yeah like feed her and like change her like and now she's like that was 20 years ago oh my god so it's it's like no mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) it's one of those if you don't use it you lose it things I guess yeah and I'm sure you I mean you kind of figure it out as you go I think a lot of things but yeah it's just scary though yeah like oh you just figure it out as you go it's like well, what if I fuck up? Then it's the little baby's dead. Like kids die so easily. Yeah. Like the kids literally die so easily. Yeah. They're just little, little nuggets. Actually, it, that reminds me of not the dying part, but the <sighs> just like not knowing what you're doing. So yeah. then when I think of like the dads. Yeah. I, like I know someone who like just had a baby and then he's like, he's like, I don't know. What, no idea what I'm doing. Like. Not a clue. And then. I try to ask questions and then it's like the mom is like, what do you mean? How do you not know that? And then it's like, (laughs) but but it's like things that you wouldn't know unless you had a baby. And then it's like, but if you don't know it and then you like do something wrong or whatever. And yeah, so he like went to go feed the baby and oh, the bottles in the fridge. So fed the baby a bottle of milk. And she was like, well, did you warm it up? He was like, what? I'm supposed to warm it up. Like, (laughs) I drink cold milk, so, like, I just assume the baby would drink cold milk. Can, like, anything happen if you do which give a baby see, cold which, milk? Like, I feel like for – I, it's not common sense, though, that, no. like, you should warm up a bottle. No. Like, I've, I, so, I've had a lot of classes on stuff, it, and I've never – It's things like that, about that like, this. when you know – when you have a baby or you know, you know, like, things like that, it 
seems like common sense, but yeah. it's, it's not. Yeah. Um, according to Google and Healthline, is it safe to feed babies cold milk? Yes, it's safe to feed your baby cold milk. In fact, frozen breast milk can be used as a form of pain relief for teething babies. And I've seen that. I've seen breast milk popsicles. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. And a lot of people will, um, they'll save their breast milk. And if your baby has like a rash or mm. eczema, if you pour it in the bath, their skin clears up. Really? Yeah. Breast milk is like- Heals everything. It's magical. And like- It's crazy. Literally your boobs know, sounds so weird, but if you're breastfeeding, your body, your boobs, whatever, all the mechanisms within that system, they know if your baby is sick. So it'll what? actually change- your breast milk to provide more antibodies and different things for the baby. So normal breast milk is like more like opaque, like white. Yeah. But if your baby is sick, your breast milk could turn bright yellow. Ew. Yeah. Well, it's, no, it's good. Or that's good. But I'd be scared if I saw like, if I didn't but know see, that. That's like, how do you learn all this? And then like bright yellow comes out of you. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Let me see if I can find a picture for you. It's so crazy. Oh, it's just, but it just proves like how magical women's bodies are. Yeah. Like to be able to grow another person inside of you. I, it's just insane. And then your body can do this. This is the breast milk color differences. Like white normal looking cow milk to yellow when your baby's sick. Oh, it like looks like like mucus. It looks like, like butter. Oh yeah, or butter. Stick of butter. That sounds better than like mucus. mucus. I thought <laughs> like pus fat, at first, or like a chunk of fat. It looks like a bag of yeah. Fat. I thought pus at first. Oh yeah, gross. Not good. Not good. Ew. Yeah, like I feel like you would like freak out if you saw that and you didn't know what. If you didn't know, I'd be like, oh my god, something's wrong with me. Yeah, I have a clot. Yeah, is this duct infection? I would think it was infected. I would think something's like infected in my boob. Yeah. Oh. Mastitis or whatever. Have you seen them suck out the big milk? clots out of boobs no yeah it's a milk no, duck don't clot. look it up i don't think i want to look it's not that bad I'm jordan and i last night when we got back from the hockey game also started googling face presenting babies oh after birth and i didn't know that was a thing like you hear about breech babies you hear about all this like other stuff but face presenting babies is probably the scariest thing i've seen yeah like that is it's bad, guys. The more I hear about just childbirth in general, is like this is a a duct, a clogged duct. I want to know less. That came out of their nipple. <gasps> that can happen. Is that it, like hard? Or is it like? It looks like it's squishy, yeah. but it, apparently it just hurts. Like because it's well, in it's huge. It's in your your it's, duct, <gasps> and so it has to come out. Apparently, some people's um, husbands will suck it out for them. Ew. <laughs> I'm for sure. If this happens to me, I'm like, Justin, you have to do it. You have to experience some pain and grossness. Oh my God. It's like sucking the boogers out of the nose. I feel oh, like with a little babies. suction thing. No, there's ones with a straw and you have to like suck it. <laughs> no, that's worse than this. Like sucking the boogers out of your baby's nose. Mm -mm, that's, that's, that's worse than this. The boob clog. I think there's a little pump too, where you can put it on your boob and like pump it out. It's both like, but they're yeah. big. Like some of these that, are yeah. really big. Like what the hell? Looks like a little mouse in the hand. It That one is the size of a mouse. That's disgusting. It's pretty bad. Women uh, yeah, see, go through a lot. Giving birth. Birth givers, I should say. And no one talks Just, about it. Which <sighs> honestly, I think the more I learn about um, childbirth and everything that comes with having a baby makes me not want to have a baby. But like, some people just like, they crush it. Some people like have amazing bursts where they're like, I want to do it again. I'm ready. Put yeah. me back in coach. Yeah. Put me in. I mean, that sounds great, but the, la the last few friends and stuff, I'm, I'm like, mm. I know <laughs> our friend Kate just had a baby and like, I didn't know her experience was like that. And I'm just like, Oh fuck. And then it's just like all the recovery after and mm -hmm. Everything I he keep hearing too about just like pregnancy and childbirth and everything, like having the kids after the fact, I mean, that's hard. That seems easy in comparison. But just like pregnancy. making the baby and then recovering from making the baby is like, like, how do people work? Like, 
Rihanna's up on the stage like dancing. She's pregnant. And like now now everything that I just know about like all the like side effects and stuff that are like different symptoms people have. Like, yeah. How, like I just want to lay on the couch when mm-hmm. I'm pregnant. Like I don't want to do anything. Nope. I don't want to work. I don't want to have to like go on with my day-to-day life. Like I barely want to work out and do things now. Like, <laughs> uh, me pregnant? I'm going to be a nightmare. That's two humans like that are, yeah. Yeah. And I'm nauseous on a daily basis as it is. Yeah. So morning sickness. Ugh. Ugh. And my sister's like, it's not morning. It's either all day or like hers is at oh night. Oh my God. Yeah. And I feel like nausea is the worst pain. Like I'd rather have like a some other pain than nausea, I think is the worst. By far. Like By I can far. deal with pain. I can't deal with nausea. No. Mm-mm. Okay, one final one for you. Okay. I don't know why, but I feel like on Reddit lately, there's been a lot of slander against vegans. I feel like people are just like are obsessed with like vegan problems. So I haven't read this one at all. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what we're getting into, but veganism has been like a hot topic on Reddit lately. Like as it being bad. Just like there's a story Just like I read. Debating it yeah, or? kind of. I read a, a story with Alejandra recently. And it was this mom who uh was having an alternative reception to her daughter's wedding. So her daughter's was getting married, having a wedding reception, and the mom was mad that her daughter was having a vegan and alcohol free wedding. So she was gonna have her own reception without her daughter for guests after. <sighs> and it's like, what you can't just have one day where you maybe try some vegan food? Right. I mean, that sounds kind of miserable, but. (laughs) Jordan's a hater. No, I mean, just, I feel like there's so many vegan foods. Like I could do that. Yeah. But alcohol free wedding. That's where I draw the line. The the reception. (laughs) "Mm." But yeah, it's not, it's someone else's day. Like, yeah, you can suck it up for one day. Yeah, I, I agree. So this one was posted about three hours ago. So very new, oh. <laughs> very new. Okay. And it's got almost 2.6K upvotes so far. Okay. Am I the asshole for no longer accommodating my friend's vegan lifestyle? My husband, 33 male, and I, 28 female, are part of a friend group of four couples. Once a month, one couple hosts a dinner party. One of the women in the group, A, 30s, is vegan. And this has never been a problem. When it is their turn to host, they serve vegan food. When it's our turn to host, I usually make her a vegan version of the meal I make for everyone else. She has always been grateful for the fact that I do my best to make her feel included. Last time they hosted a dinner, the meal had soy sauce in it. I am very allergic to soy. So I get there. She tells me the meal has soy in it. Everyone knows I am allergic to it. Then she hands me a takeout menu and tells me to order something for myself. I found this extremely rude since I go the extra mile for her to have almost the same meal and she couldn't even whip up a stir fry without soy sauce for me. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to spoil the mood. The next day I sent her a text and told her that I felt a bit hurt that she did not try to accommodate my allergy when I do the same for her chosen lifestyle. She replied and told me that she doesn't have to accommodate me. All she has to do is provide me a meal, which she did. So I decided fair is fair. I will no longer be making a whole different meal for her anymore. Last Saturday was our turn to host the dinner. I made steak, mashed potatoes, bacon wrapped asparagus, and a triple chocolate cake for dessert. Oh my God. That would be like my like last meal. Like if I could have one last meal. I that sounds amazing oh my god I'm not even a big red meat eater and I'm like my mouth I'm so hungry my mouth is watering okay sorry this is about vegan when they yeah (laughs) when they arrived I handed her a menu to a vegan restaurant and told her to choose her meal she was shocked usually I would have made her some grilled mushrooms vegan mashed potatoes and roasted asparagus and a vegan chocolate cake she was pouty the whole evening. A, nut, a separate chocolate cake, too. That's insane. That is so much extra work for one person. 
that's a lot of work. So oh my much God. work. Whole extra dessert and everything too. Uh-huh. Her husband ended up telling my husband that what I did was very petty and it made her feel extremely excluded since I was usually the only one who made her feel included during these dinners. My husband just told him, my wife treated your wife how she treated her. Now they are calling me a petty asshole. So am I the asshole? No. I, no. The fact that she just like handed a takeout menu after she like making totally separate meals. Like, I mean, I don't cook either. So that's like (laughs) cooking the first meal and then cooking a whole separate thing for one person is, yeah, that's like so thoughtful and like, and then to like have it reciprocated as here. Here's a menu. Yeah. Order something off a menu. Like. I'd be pissed. Yeah. I love that she did this. I think fair is fair. Yeah. Like, it, I'm going to treat you how you treat me. Yeah. It reminds me of the saying, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah. And this is quite literally, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah. This is the only person that made you feel included. Mm-hmm. And you want to exclude her yeah. by adding soy sauce. Do you know how easy it is to just scoop a little bit of that stir fry out as you're cooking and put it in its own little pan right, without she soy sauce? Didn't even have to make a different meal. Not like this person does. Yeah, it's the same meal. Just don't put the sauce on it. Sauce on the side, and then it's fine. <laughs> like, yeah, it's harder to order the takeout. It is quite literally harder and more money to order the takeout. Yeah. Get it together, lady. Pull Get, yourself together. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> One more time. I need, I need a prop. You need a prop. I need a prop. You need the prop. Pull yourself and then you'll together. have it. Yeah. And it's different. Okay, vegan is usually a choice and allergic is not a choice. So she doesn't have a choice if she wants to eat soy sauce or not. It's like if she's allergic to soy sauce, she's not going to, she can't eat soy sauce. Like, yeah. But if vegan is usually a choice, I mean, it is a choice, right? Like, so. A lot of times. Yeah. There's some diet, like some health conditions where it's like, it's better for you to be vegan, but. But it's still. A a, lot of times it's a choice. Yeah. So it's, and that's a lot of like, like vegetarian. Okay. Then, you know, substitute something for if it's like a meat entree or whatever, but vegan, that's. To make a whole separate entree or make a whole separate meal that's like vegan would be hard. And to make it the same thing that they're already eating too. That's the thing. It wasn't just like it's another vegan meal. It's Mm -hmm. a whole vegan version of what everyone else is eating to make it feel special and inclusive. Which is amazing that you did that. Like Amazing. That's a really good friend. Yeah. A really good friend. Yeah. I feel like the other girl is, yeah. She's off her rocker. Yeah. Off her rocker. And the husband too, like, oh, you're, that was petty. It's like, did you not think the soy sauce thing was an issue? And also, yeah, soy sauce is great. I love it with some good sushi, some soybeans, edamame, whatever. But like, there's a spicy chili sauce she could have done. Yeah. Teriyaki is great. In, in, oh, teriyaki is better anyway. Like, too. I don't know if teriyaki has soy in it, but no, like, it there's might. a, but, well, it <laughs> might, it might, but it might not. It might not. Honestly, I'm f- kind of food illiterate. A lot of times, but there's so many other sauces she could have picked for a stir fry. Yeah. It's the most basic thing to cook, honestly, I think. Mm -hmm. I think unless you're like hand chopping the carrots, hand chopping the broccoli. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know. I just buy the stir fry kits and pour it in a pan. Same. Like it's- Frozen meals. It's so easy. Yeah. And oh, just- Yeah. Why do this to a friend? I don't know if it's like, like vegetarian and vegan. I mean, they're like- more popular now you know like every restaurant offers vegan vegetarian options like so I don't know if it now it's just like oh it's like yeah you should accommodate me for being vegan because that's just how it is now like mm-hmm. that's just there's so many people that do it but that was a great friend that did that and then you went and ruined it yeah like it seems like she was just not grateful that her friend did that for her or didn't realize the like yeah the like double didn't even, standard didn't even realize that like 
kind of just like, oh yeah, she should make me a vegan meal because I'm vegan. Like, mm-hmm. but almost entitled to it. Yeah. Like, I could see that. I mean, every restaurant and stuff you go to now, everyone has to ask like, what are your dietary things? Like, yeah, everyone has something, something, whether it's like they choose it or they're allergic to it or it's just, yeah, but, which whatever, however you like, whatever you want to eat, but to make everyone else also f- like accommodate for you. And then you're not going to accommodate for other people is the double, the hypocrisy, the yeah. double standard. Yeah. That's what's really, I think, frustrating. And I think, I think OP is totally fair in what yeah. they did. Not the yeah. asshole at no. all. The top comment on this one is not the asshole. I don't even think it was petty. The friend was rude, especially in the text after the meal where she provided you a menu. That was her opportunity to apologize and say, yeah, I see what you mean. I always appreciate that you take the time to make sure the meal works for me. I'll do better next time. Sorry for being a jerk. She dropped the ball, which is true. I kind of forgot that OP, our writer, Mm -hmm. even confronted the friend and was like, hey, I was kind of hurt by that. Wait, and then what did the other girl do? The friend was like, I don't have to accommodate you. I just have to provide you a meal. I forgot about the text exchange. (gasps) Totally forgot about it. (gasps) This girl's rude as fuck. Then I would just like, okay, next uh, dinner party, whatever. It's like, yep, menu. Like. Yep, that's it. and that's go. that's what you get. That's exactly what she did. Yeah, I love it. I love this. This is a good one. This is satisfying. Yeah. I should have saved this. I have another theme coming mm-hmm. up called like karmic justice or like the- instant karma. Mm-hmm. This is instant karma. Yeah. This is so good. Yeah. OP responds to that comment. And they go, "Honestly, if she had apologized, I would have forgiven and forgotten. Her doubling down, that's the reason I chose to stop going above and beyond for her." Mm-hmm. And I would too. Like when yeah. someone like that's a slap in the face. Yeah, you didn't appreciate anything I did for you. Didn't even notice maybe. Like didn't like it was expected almost. And yeah, there's actually a lot of comments from OP on this one. Someone goes, "Not the asshole. Equal treatment. Just make sure you do the same for any other friend that might have a dietary restriction. It would be the asshole if you only treated her like that." Mm -hmm. Perhaps have the group come up with rules for dinners that everyone knows about ahead of time regarding meals and restrictions. And OP goes, except for her being vegan and me having a soy allergy, no one else has any dietary restrictions. So it's literally just the two of them. Yeah. I wonder if OP did something and like doesn't even know that this friend is mad at her or just like the friend is jealous of her. So started doing this and it's not even anything OP necessarily did, but like, Something seems off because yeah, out of all the meals you could choose to make for this one And dinner, if everyone knows the dietary restrictions. It feels intentional. Like it, there's two. It's, it's like that's it. Yeah. So now I'm starting to think that this girl is jealous or insecure. Like the and, soy sauce was on purpose. Yeah. Because how many other meals can you make? How many other recipes are out there in the world? Right. Like, and you picked of soy all sauce. Meals? Yeah. This For is intentional. Night. Yeah. This is intentional. Yeah, there's some backstory. What's the backstory to this? Like, someone goes, not the asshole. So, what are you going to do when they host again and the meal contains vats of soy, which smart money says it will? I'm not sure yeah. if I would tell her you're done with the pissing match and just leave or march out to the car and retrieve a bloody steak dinner you picked up on the way there. And Opie goes, I would order pizza and wings. That would become my pizza and wings night. That'd be kind of funny if she just like showed up to the dinner with like a pizza or like so, like, her brought, own, like brought her own meal. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so annoying. Like Which would be even, annoying, but it'd be kind of funny. Like instead of like getting there and like, oh, having to order your own, then just. Hilarious. And then if it's better, if you bring something that's better than whatever she cooked. And everyone wants that instead. Yeah. <laughs> A pizza I could see that, that just like smells so good. I could see that. <laughs> Someone um, does have another question about like, I'm also curious how the lone vegan lasted this long with no one accommodating her food restrictions. Did the other folks make her order takeout prior to this event? Did she just not eat? Or did she only give the option of a side veggie? Oh yeah, wait, because how many, it's like couples? There's four couples. So four different people are cooking these meals. Yeah, so what about the other... Couple. Yeah. Like, so OP goes, they usually ordered her a meal from a restaurant before she arrived or made a salad and vegan sides. 
I was the only one who made sure that there was a vegan version of the meal I cooked, like making a little lentil burger patty if I was making burgers for everyone, or a vegan butter chicken, so she can have almost the same meal as everyone else. I mean, I think she just went above and beyond, which is amazing, but maybe she just maybe she just like did too much. And that if everyone else in the group is like, oh, if you won't eat this, we'll just order you something. Yeah. So maybe she was the one that kind of, she would treat her friend like this, but- No one else reciprocates. And then she expected her friend to also treat her like that. But if in the rest of the group, if they always order meals for someone who can't eat it, then I don't, then it doesn't seem as bad when no. they had her order something. Yeah. It seems like she, since she gives her friend the special treatment, she expects the special treatment. I could see that. Just because she would treat someone that way doesn't mean that that's how everyone mm. thinks or would, that's what everyone would do in that situation. I can see that being so true. A thought also just popped into my head when you were saying that, where maybe she just also has like a complete lack of awareness because everyone orders for her or orders in a meal for her mm -hmm. that she's like, oh, well, like ordering takeout isn't a big deal because everyone does it for me anyways, usually, except yeah. the one person. So mm -hmm. maybe she's like, oh, well, takeout when I want soy sauce, stir, stir fry, whatever, mm -hmm. isn't that big of a deal. Yeah. But in my head, I have such overanalyzing and like yeah. so much awareness that in my head, I would recognize that this person goes above and beyond for me. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I'm going to ensure that what I cook, they can eat as well. Like yeah. I'm going to make sure that mm -hmm. it doesn't have soy sauce because of all that effort and care and love and generosity. Yeah. I can also see how her side though now from like the soy sauce, just kind of like, yeah, like every whenever I go to a dinner, my order or my meal is always ordered. So yeah. if she like, it's no big deal. Like I want to make the soy, the stir fry with soy sauce. Mm -hmm. So we'll just order her meal. No big deal. But obviously from like her perspective, it's like totally bashing her for just for not accommodating. Yeah. But I can see how it's like, oh, but this is just like, it's no big deal. Like this is what I, that's what happens when I go to a dinner party. I think that's, that's probably true. Yeah. And then I think like she goes above and beyond, but you can't really expect people to treat you the same way that you treat people. That like, is true. Unfortunately. You can, you know, do amazing things for some, but that doesn't mean they're going to do the same things back to you. Well, it's almost like a gift. Like just because yeah. you give someone a gift, you shouldn't expect it back. Yes. And that's kind of this vibe. Mm -hmm. I do. I, okay. I feel like it's like an expecting You're kind it. of convincing me. I'm like, but I don't, <laughs> but I don't think she's, I don't think our, our writer is still the asshole, but I, no. I do think where it's like, I think they just have different perspectives yes. on the situation. And yeah. then- yeah, because one is expecting one thing and the other one is yep. probably like no big deal. Like, 100%. I think I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tiger. <gasps> yes. But Tiger's on my shit list for that tampon debacle. Oh, yeah. I just saw a woman um, on TikTok today, like a newscaster, sportscaster, mm -hmm. and she was like, Tiger's got it wrong. You should be passing out the tampons to the people that crush the game that the yeah. beat the odds because women people that have periods have to battle through cramps and insomnia and blah 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 and I'm like yeah yeah mm -hmm. lady uh, you got it I have to say when you it's funny that you actually um brought that up because so my dad um I don't know if golf was on or something uh, it was maybe on like Sunday or I don't even know what day. I'm so lost with the days. Anyways, <laughs> the other day my dad was like, did you hear about the whole tiger scandal? Whatever. Yeah. With the tampon. Was, or he didn't say with the tampon. I was like, no, what happened? So he's telling me and he's like, everyone is like up in arms and he has to like defend himself. All because like, I, it's probably some inside joke, you know, like something stupid. But with, yeah, with the tampon, like how he You're playing hand, like a girl. And my dad was like, and then someone, you know, wrote this big article about, you know, everyone is just up in arms about it. And at first I was like, like that wouldn't offend me. Like mm -hmm. I didn't really think anything of it. I was like, yeah, people are just overreacting, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then when I heard you talk about it and then when you, but just when you said like play like a girl and then it was like, 
What Oof. once I once you hear like once you said that it was like yeah I don't like that like it's like you're playing like a girl I mean because it's it's you know it's been said forever it's just like a thing like oh like I hit this shot way farther than you and I'm like the old man like you're playing like a girl here's mm-hmm. your tampon like and my dad was like well I don't get the big deal about it and but then as soon as you said that it was like. Oof. <laughs> Gives yeah. you the ick. I think it is, it's interesting. I don't think a lot of guys get it because they don't live in the shoes of being a girl or a mm-hmm. woman or anything like that. And it's it's really interesting. I think a great way to describe it is looking at a trans man's perspective. And I've seen a lot of people that have transitioned and they're like, wow, is it different being a guy? I don't get sexist jokes. I don't get misogyny anymore. Mm -hmm. People treat me different. It's like, like, why do, why? Like, why do we have it so hard as girls and women sometimes? It's, and it's like, yeah, okay. He passed him a tampon. The big deal. Like inside joke or, oh, you're playing like a girl. But it's like, wait, but, but what do you mean playing like a girl? What are you implying by playing like a girl? Yeah. So he's doing bad at that round of golf. So and that's so, like a girl. So that's like a girl. Insinuating and that girls are bad. At yeah. Sp- it's that insinuation and that those mm-hmm. implications by that simple message. And it's, which I didn't think anything of it at first. I, was I didn't like, whatever either. I thought I like, was, I thought Tiger was going to like say, I don't know, make some comment about, like I knew it was about like women and like something. And I thought he was going to say something bad, like, like call him something or. Yeah. But it was just a tampon, so I was like, whatever. But then it's still, it's still insinuating the same thing. Yeah. It's like the, yeah, it's like those little like messages and things that are just like, whatever. Like, why would you get offended by that? But it's like, because they're, it's just always, it's just like when you keep seeing him, keep seeing him. It's just like. Again and again It's just again. a normal thing. Like, it's just normal to. Yeah. Well, and how, like, we get it so much already and. What does that say to like little girls that do watch golf and want to be golfers? I know. Like women's sports is hard or it's gets no recognition. No it gets respect. Like nothing. Like the I think like women's NBA right now is like a great example. Like yeah. Just trying to get a little more money. Like and it's yeah, because you don't see it usually. And it's I didn't even know that there was a women's hockey league. Isn't that crazy? And like, yeah. It's just not on. Like, I would watch. Yeah, because you don't see it. Like, I've never seen a game. I've never seen a game televised. And maybe I don't have, like, the right channels. Like, I only have basic normal TV. Yeah. I don't have cable. But I'm like, why? Like, but if you don't see it, if it's not broadcasted, if it's not, like, talked about, it's just whatever. I mean, it's still competition. It's still, yeah, it might not be as fast or, like, as, you know, can't hit as far or hit as hard or, or whatever. But it's, like... I mean, even just like the soccer games and mm-hmm. stuff. It's like you watch it and it's like it's entertaining and it's, it's like, so good. It it's doesn't matter like I mean, if you compare it to the men's game, the men's game is a little faster, but it's still like it's just because it's not ever broadcasted. You never see it. So then you just I think yeah. of like U of M too. I did, yeah. I think of the hockey teams. Mm-hmm. The women's hockey team is like dynasty, like won the national championship how many years in a row? So, so many. And like, I didn't even go to a game. No. I And I like feel bad. Like, I know. Why didn't we? You should have gone. I, I don't know. Like, they couldn't. I mean, they got fans, but. But I didn't know. I never like even in college. I didn't hear when they were. No. Like, I couldn't tell you like the men's games, Friday and Saturday oh, yeah. nights. When, I don't know when. The it was always packed. Women's were. Team team was always horrible. Like. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty okay one year. I mean, but they it was like. Good. But the women's team was so much better. The, incredible. But people didn't go. It's always these excuses. Yeah. And even interviewers, people that are supposed to know these sports. Mm -hmm. I saw an interview of a guy playing a tennis player. I saw that too. And he was like, he was like, how does it feel to be like the first USA player to win two, blah, 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 blah. And he was, he was like, well, Serena Williams did it first. Yeah. First male player. Yeah. I'm like, like, good for you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Especially those sports like that, like golf. Like, okay, yeah, the women's tees are going to be up hot like yeah closer to the t because we have like we're smaller we have less muscle like obviously we can't hit it as far as you but the short game like 
that's this it's the same i know putting chipping things like that like guys don't really have any advantage over girls in terms of like because it's not like hitting harder or farther farther or anything i would love it's really to just see the that. first drive and then mm-hmm. i would love to see a co-ed golf tournament where it's just like handicapped appropriately like the women are up on the further tee box yeah i would actually love to see that and see in terms of like do they do that I don't know. We need to look it up. I know I've seen like the tournament where it's like with the um the celebrities and a golfer. No, the like father well, like father son oh, or yeah. like father daughter mother son yeah. what, like things like that and there was a couple girls in that. Okay. That's um, cool. That's cute. That's really cool. But there's like two or something. Oh. But <laughs> but they're in there. <laughs> they're in there. We're trying. <laughs> We're trying. Just just like all the people in these stories today, these professional sports leagues and Tiger Woods. Pull yourself together. God. But thank you for joining me. Thanks for having this me. This was so good. Was I love fun. I love my little trips to Chicago to visit you. I know. I love when you come visit. I know. I'm an easy guest, I hope. Fun. Except all fun. my mess that I have here and everything but it's yeah. getting dark and I'm like oh I have to go to the airport mm-hmm. I wonder if my flight is uh still on time or if it's been canceled yet okay I was also just thinking too kind of scared um so with my like my new job offer yeah Jordan got a new job I got a new job offer today Morgan was the first person that texted me the job like literally I think <gasps> oh, yeah I did like she literally texted me the job and was like oh my god you'd be perfect for this I saw it and I was like yes and I was like I'm not qualified for this and then I thought about it and like applied and I got off the job, but like, yeah. So thank you. Ah! You're the, I'm, yeah. You're Congratulations. The that, literally the first person that sent me in. You deserve it. You're so talented. So, so good at what you do. You're going to be great at this job and just you're the perfect fit. They're lucky. I'm excited. They're lucky to have you. And well, I'm lucky to have a friend that like, oh my God. literally like, oh, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I don't even like looking for jobs myself. And then like it. you saw it and was like, oh. I love it. I love it. So thank you. You're welcome. Such and a supportive friend. I think, well, I think it's just a more of the story of like, you might feel underqualified, but Jordan was their most qualified candidate. So believe in yourself. Okay. I don't think I have any other messages. There will probably <laughs> be a Patreon story from this episode. So head over to Patreon. But other than that, until next time, bye. <laughs>